Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Apacer channel. My name is Ben and today we're going to be giving you an introduction to the QNAP TVS 872XT with specialized storage devices from Apacer. First off, thank you to QNAP for providing us with the TVS 872XT sample that we have before us. The TVS 872XT is a special kind of machine called NAS or Network Attached Storage. This may look like a fancy computer, but don't be fooled as that is not its main purpose. The purpose of an NAS is to share many files rapidly between many computers, store backups of files in case something unexpected happens to your computer, edit files on the NAS that may be used by other users later on, or store long-term files that you may need in the future. We have already fitted this device, the TVS872XT, with our storage solutions in the form of the PPSS25 and the PP3480. These drives are built specifically for reliability, longevity, and for use with an NAS. So as you may have noticed by now, there are eight disk drive bays on this machine. The TVS872XT holds up to eight SATA drives and two M.2 SSD slots, bringing it to a whopping total of 10 drives. This gives you an ample variety of choices to make with your storage options. From personal experience, however, I recommend buying storage as you need it as time goes on because of Moore's law. Ask yourself how much a 128 gigabyte solid state drive would cost you in 2014 versus a 128 gigabyte solid state drive in 2020, for example. The price difference can be enormous. Additionally, file sizes for media such as photos and videos tend to get larger with the mobile devices that we purchase. So, it could be to your advantage to purchase larger storage for cheaper a few years down the pipeline. Please bear in mind that these are only our suggestions and not the law of the land. The TVS 872XT NAS contains two embedded NVMe M.2 interface slots and eight SATA ports. If you opt to install two M.2 solid state drives and install an SSD, then this is ideally how you would get the best performance out of a RAID configuration, thus allowing you to get the most out of your 10 gigabit ethernet port. We are about to demonstrate a hybrid disk mode and a pure SSD mode in this video. With this configuration, we will be using two 512 gigabyte Apacer PP3480 NVMe SSDs for the cache and four 2.5 512 gigabyte a Pacer PPS 25S SATA SSDs and four traditional hard drives with a capacity of one terabyte each to build a RAID disk array. A quick forenote, SATA hard drives usually read and write at 100 megabytes per second. The 10 gigabit ethernet reads and writes at about 1250 meg megabytes per second. And our solution using a double M.2 cache allows reading and writing speeds of up to 2000 megabytes per second. Now let's take our NAS setup for a test drive. The TVS 872XT NAS supports 10 gigabit ethernet and in this benchmark, we are writing a 102 gigabyte file folder to and from the respective drives that are being benchmarked. Unsurprisingly, our hard drive benchmark is the slowest and it took us about 20 minutes to finish that test drive. Now let's activate our cache and apply it to all four of those hard drives and then check the difference. Now here we are running the same benchmark. However, this time the cache has been applied and we can see that there is a world of difference. Now in this benchmark test, we are simply going to be writing to the solid state drives on our NAS without the assistance of an M.2 cache. And now we are going to activate and apply our M.2 cache for the SSDs and this should yield the fastest writing speed. So 
So what difference do we observe when using an SSD? Simply put, moving anything from the NAS to our desktop becomes faster. Whether you're launching the Finder login sidebar in the NAS or logging in from a web browser to your NAS, the NAS browsing experience itself will become faster. Previously, when launching only with hard drives, we would still have to wait a few seconds for each of these applications to launch on our NAS. With an SSD installed, however, that process becomes significantly reduced and there is absolutely zero need to wait. Opening apps and login screens fly by very quickly. Previously, we always perceived that the page loading times were slow because of internet problems, but in reality, it's because of our hard drive's read speed. So this is one area where a solid state drive outperforms a hard drive. So if it feels like your NES has slow loading times and you want to change this, but don't want to spend money on industrial level hardware, all you have to do is install an SSD to act as a cache for your NES, which makes for a nice upgrade option. If there are multiple people who need access to the same large file simultaneously, however, then going with SATA SSDs and a twin M.2 PCIe cache is definitely the way to go. And finally, here I am using my work laptop to write some files from an older NAS with only hard drives to write nearly six and a half gigabytes of data from the NAS to my work laptop. Let's do some simple math. If this file were 63 gigabytes, like a 4K video, for example, then it would take us almost 20 minutes to finish under present configuration. Copying this file took almost exactly two minutes of time. If we were using a system with 10 gigabit ethernet and an M.2 NVMe cache supporting a SATA SSD configuration, and if this were a 63 gigabyte file folder, it could finish up to 50 times faster or in under 30 seconds. So using a Pacer SSDs with an NAS really makes a massive difference. If you guys thought this video on how to use the QNAP TVS 872XT was useful, make sure you leave us with a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions about our specialized storage solutions at a pacer, make sure you leave them in the comments below. And if you guys wanna see more videos like these, make sure you subscribe to our channel. My name is Ben, and I'll see you guys in the next one.